Good evening and welcome to RTM News. My name is Vicky Lee White and I'll be bringing you your top stories tonight. In South African news, Zuma ignores Mbete during Q&A. President Jacob Zuma repeatedly ignored Speaker Baleka Mbete's calls to sit down during his question and answer session in Parliament yesterday. Zuma faced a slew of questions mostly relating to Hunkandla questions during his first appearance to answer questions by MPs this year. The sitting started off heatedly with opposition parties repeatedly calling for Parliament to set a date to questions posed to him on 21 August, which was disrupted when EFF members chanted, pay back the money. When Zuba had taken the podium after points of order delayed his appearance for over an hour, DA parliamentary leader Musi Miamani accused the president of violating the assembly by dodging questions and calls to appear in parliament. Zuma, who was often chuckled during this session, became visibly agitated by his remarks saying, I have never violated parliament and I have never dodged questions posted to me in this house. I quote, he went further to elaborate in the incident of 21 August when EFF members were ushered out and said, on that day, this parliament did not act honorably to me. In the next story, Northern Cape man gets 20 years for murder. A man was sentenced by the Preska Regional Court to 20 years in prison for murdering his girlfriend, Northern Cape Police said yesterday. Khalin Steenkop was jailed for killing Rachel Tace, who was 28 at the time in 2005, Lieutenant Sergio Cox said in a statement. The couple were living together when Tace was reported missing on the 30th of March 2005. Her badly bruised body was found in a toilet drain in Bosman Street, Mary Dale, on the 10th of April that year. Steenkamp, now 31, was arrested and charged with the murder. He was sentenced on Tuesday. Hotel manager is catered for customers in underage brothel. A hotel manageress was making a monthly profit of 25,000 rand selling food to the customers of a hotel owned by a doctor accused of running a brothel with young girls, the Durban Regional Court heard yesterday. Vina Budram told the court she would make a profit of between 25 and 30,000 rand a month from the catering enterprise she operated at one of her boss's two hotels without his permission. Budram was being re-examined in the case of Dr. Geshen Rugnath, who is accused of running a brothel from his hotel, Durban Inn's Town Lodge. He, his wife Ravina, and their co-accused Sandile Patrick Zweni, Nonduzo Lamini, and Baba Dubazini have pleaded not guilty to 156 charges, including assault, rape, sexual exploitation of a child, and racketeering. Zweni allegedly operated a prostitution ring with girls as young as 12 from the in town lodge with the Rugnan's consent and knowledge. During cross-examination earlier this year, Rugnan's lawyer Anand Nepal accused Budram of stealing 50,000 rand a month from the business. She denied the allegation and says, I quote, I was not stealing, I was working hard to make the money, Budram replied at the time. In the final South African story, Posa rejects defamatory letter claims. ANC veteran Matthews Posa yesterday disputed claims that he wrote a defamatory letter about Mpumalanga Premier David Mabuza. A legal process was underway to evaluate the merits of the allegations against him and it was unnecessary for him to comment at present, he said in a statement. I quote, to my utter surprise, the story published in the media alludes that the affidavit was compiled in 2014. Whereas to my knowledge, there are people who have had the same document in question for the past five years, he said. These people will, upon request, testify before any court regarding how long they have had the document before it was purportedly manufactured in my house, as alluded in the quoted affidavit. I quote City Press reported on Sunday that Jan Finter, who used 
to work for Poza, claimed in an affidavit he saw Poza draft a report at the Hazy View home accusing Mabuza of being an apartheid-era spy. This allegation, as yet untested, contradicted Poza's insistence that a whistleblower anonymously delivered a document to his house about Mabuza's alleged past, according to the report. In a statement yesterday, Poza said he knew Fenter, who had managed his household for about two years. That's it for the South African News. Stay with us and we'll be right back. Welcome back to our team news. Let's have a look at the rest of the African stories. Tanzania bus crash leaves dozens dead in Iringa. Two lorries and a bus have collided in Tanzania's highland region of Iringa, killing 41 people, police say. The accident happened after a lorry driver swerved to avoid a pothole, the regional commander told the BBC. One of the lorry containers fell onto the bus that had been heading to Dar es Salaam, crushing many passengers to death, he said. Traffic accidents are common in Tanzania, where the state of the roads and the vehicles is often very poor. President Jakaya Kikekwete released a statement saying, I quote, this gives cause for great mourning. The entire country has been shaken. The AFP news agency reports, Iringa Regional Police Commander Ramadan Mungi said a further 23 passengers had been seriously injured and had been taken to Mafinga Hospital. All the bodies trapped between the lorries had been removed, he said. The bus had been traveling from the southwestern town of Mbeya to the commercial capital. In the next story, Kenya police officer found with rhino horn. A Kenyan police officer and two other suspects have appeared in court over the illegal possession of rhino horn. The officer was arrested with a piece of rhino horn weighing 600 grams, the Kenyan Wildlife Service says. Rhino horn is said to sell for around $65,000 per kilogram on the Asian black market. Kenya has recently taken a more aggressive stance against poach poaching as it commands a surge in demand for rhino horn. The suspect, a junior officer in the Kenya Police Service, was lured into a trap by KWS agents who posed as rhino horn buyers, says the BBC's Anne Soy in Nairobi. The officer allegedly threatened to shoot the arresting officers before being overpowered and taken into custody with the other suspects on Monday night. All three men pleaded not guilty and will be remanded in custody until a bail hearing. It's not the first time a security official has been arrested in Kenya in connection with the illicit trade. Brighton diagnosed with Ebola in Sierra Leone. A female British healthcare worker has been diagnosed with Ebola in Sierra Leone, authorities in London said yesterday, and a military plane has been sent to evacuate her if needed. I quote, we can confirm that a UK military healthcare worker in Sierra Leone has tested positive for Ebola, said a spokesperson for Public Health England, a government agency. The health worker is being treated in a specialist Ebola center in Kerry Town in western Sierra Leone. 
A Royal Air Force plane has been sent to the country to be ready to evacuate the patient if needed. I quote, medical experts are currently assessing the situation to ensure that appropriate care is delivered. The PHE spokesperson said a clinical decision on whether the individual will be medically evacuated to the UK for treatment will be taken in due course. An estimated 700 British service people have been deployed to Sierra Leone to help in the response against Ebola, which swept through West Africa last year. That's it for now. Stay with us and we'll be right back. Open Heavens, A Guide to a Close Fellowship with God, Volume 15 for Adults and Volume 8 for Teenagers, 2015, written by Pastor E.A. Adeboye, is available. Open Heavens is a motivating and inspirational Christian daily guidebook to teach the ways of God. You can get a copy of the Open Heavens at Redemption Camp, Kilometer 46, Lagos, Eberdan Expressway, Mowe, Ogun State, Nigeria, and every parish of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. You can also grab yours at the regional headquarters, the Master's Place, 4 Commercial Avenue, Stratum Park, Randburg, Johannesburg. Telephone numbers plus 277-1179-14141. And our Zambia Regional Headquarters, Regional Secretariat Plot, 8665 Kamloops Road, next to the Evangelical Fellowship, Lusaka, Zambia. Telephone number plus 2609-7741-0426. Or you can also get a copy at any of our regional headquarters of the Redeemed Christian Church of God worldwide. For more information, visit our website www.rccg.org and www.eaadeboye.com. When you read, you skim the surface. When you study, you discover the treasure. God bless you. Welcome back to RTM News. Let's have a look at the Nigerian stories. In the first Nigerian story, robbers kill undergraduate in Ado Ekiti. Residents of Adebayo area Edo Ekiti have been thrown into a mournful mood as armed robbers shot dead one Emitope Ogunye, a student of the Federal Polytechnic Ado Ekiti, during a midnight operation. The ND2 accountancy student died when a 12-man armed, armed robbery gang attacked his father's house at Adebayo area of the state capital. In the next story, Vanguard gathered that the young man and his parents and sister, Yetunde, a student of Olabisi Olabanjo University, Ogun State, were at home when the robbers struck. In the next story, protesting workers besiege oil firms facility in Bayelsa. Hundreds of protesting workers yesterday besieged a multi-billion Naira Shell Petroleum Development Company's Bahrain Ubi gas gathering plant in Yanukba local government area of Bayelsa state over alleged violation of local content law and poor employment policies. The aggrieved workers made up of welders and fitters threatened to take their protests to the presidency until they got justice. The protesters accused Dehu and Morpo, two oil servicing firms working for SPDC, of refusing to employ indigenous for technical works and shutting out indigenous companies in contravention of the provisions of the local content policy. Morocco, Nigeria spat over royal phone call. Morocco has recalled its ambassador from Nigeria accusing the authorities there of using King Mohammed VI in an election campaign. Its foreign ministry issued a statement denying the king had spoken by phone to Nigeria's President Goodluck Jonathan, as he had been stated by Nigeria. The North African Kingdom denounced such unethical practices, it said. Nigeria has denied that the king was being used to win over Muslim voters. Mr. Jonathan, a Christian from southern Nigeria, is facing a strong challenge in the 28 March elections from opposition candidate Muhammadu Buhari, who is popular in Nigeria's mainly Muslim north. That's all the African news that I have for you tonight. Stay with us and we'll be right back. Are you celebrating a birthday, a wedding, office party, anniversary or feel like having a taste of the best cake ever? Then Cakes at Eddie is the place to go. We specialize in all kinds of cakes, such as novelty cakes, character cakes and many more. Just think of something and we'll make it for you. 
Our telephone numbers are 061-446-1812 or call us at 082-369-2880 or you can email us on at cakeseddy at gmail.com or you can also visit our website at www.eddiescakes.co.za. Cakes at Eddie, where elegance and taste meet. Welcome back to RTM News. Let's have a look at the international stories. In the first international story, North Korean envoy apologized after diplomat caught with undeclared gold. The North Korean ambassador in Bangladesh issued an apology after one of the embassy's diplomats was caught carrying 27 kilograms of undeclared gold into the country's main airport in Dhaka, according to officials in Bangladesh. North Korean officials could not be reached for comment. Meanwhile, state media in the largely isolated communist country has not yet reported on the incident. Kazi Mohammed Zuadin, a top official in Bangladesh's customs agency, told CNN his officers discovered the gold on the afternoon of the 5th of March after the diplomat arrived on a Singapore Airlines flight. Ziaudin said customs officials had received a confidential tip that a North Korean diplomat would be, very, would be carrying illegal items. It was very tough. We have to be very careful and sensitive when we deal with a diplomat, Ziaudin said, referring to the Vienna Convention, which affords diplomats certain degrees of consular immunity. In the next story, drunk Secret Service agents crash into White House barrier. The Department of Homeland Security is investigating another incident of misconduct by senior Secret Service agents, White House officials said last night. Two senior Secret Service agents, including a top member of President Barack Obama's protective detail, crashed a car into a White House barricade following a late-night party for retiring spokesperson Ed Donovan and it's suspected they had been drinking, sources confirmed to CNN. The Washington Post first reported the incident. The officers were allowed to go home after a supervisor on duty overruled on-duty law enforcement who wanted to arrest the agents and conduct sobriety tests, a U.S. law enforcement official confirmed to CNN. The two employees have been re reassigned to non-supervisory, non-operational assignments, a Secret Service official said. In the next story, Tampa police make arrests in tortured dog case. Tampa police have arrested a pair of teenagers in last week's shooting of a young pit bull mix that was left for dead. The 17-year-olds face aggravated animal cruelty and armed trespassing charges after tying the hound, now named Cabela, to railroad tracks and shooting her multiple times. Surveillance video from the area showed a group of individuals walking the dog along the tracks in the city's Sulphur Springs neighborhood before later running away, said Detective Patrick Mesmer. Neighbors heard gunshots and police were called. Cabela was purchased to be used in dog fighting, but she wasn't any good as it at it, so they wanted to get rid of her, according to Mesmer. I quote, this appears to be an isolated incident, he said. It doesn't appear that there was a large amount of dog fighting that goes on in the neighborhood. In the final story tonight, three collected millions in fraudulent school scheme. Three area residents were arrested and charged yesterday for allegedly operating four Southern California schools for Korean and Chinese students who never attended classes and lived in other states on student visas in a pay-to-stay scheme. The three educators collected as much as $6 million in annual tuition from an enrollment of about 1,500 foreign students who were largely from South Korea and China, said federal prosecutors. The arrest came after a federal grand jury indicted the three defendants Tuesday on charges of conspiracy to commit immigration fraud, money laundering and other immigration offences. An allegation in the indictment would also require the defendants to forfeit property and proceeds
derived from the fraudulent scheme, authorities said. His son, Shem, 51, of Beverly Hills, is the owner and manager of one of the post-secondary schools and is charged with 13 counts of use or possession of an immigration document procured by fraud, authorities says. The two other defendants are each charged with one count of that same offense. They are Huang Chan Moon, also known as Steve Moon, 39, of Los Angeles, who assisted in the operation and management of the schools, and Yoon Young Choi, also known as Jamie Choi, 32, of Los Angeles, a former employee who also assisted in the operation and management of the school. That's all the news that I have for you tonight, but stay with us as we're crossing over to Adelani for the sports. Good evening and a very warm welcome to everybody. You're currently watching RTM Sports News with me, Adela Neo Gurede. These are the top stories this evening. In African football news, Flying Eagles qualify for Under-20 World Cup. In more African football news, Kaiser Chiefs suffer defeat in the PSL and Sundowns destroy Polokwane City. In other African football news, Ghana FA reports players over betting allegations. In international football news, 10-man PSG dumped Chelsea out of the Champions League and Bayern Munich too hot for Shakhtar Donetsk. In Cricket World Cup 2015 news, Scotland send Majid Hack home. In tennis news, Heather Watson beats Julia Georges in Indian Wells. In more tennis news, Andy Moray, Jonas Bjorkman to join coaching team for trials. And in boxing news, the world will stop on the 2nd of May, says Floyd Mayweather. RTM Sports brings you the latest update on the fight. Now starting with the latest news in Nigerian football. Nigeria displayed grit to defeat a spirited Congo side 4-1. Wednesday night in their second game at the ongoing African Under-20 Championship in Senegal. The win means Nigeria has now qualified for this year's FIFA Under-20 World Cup, which begins on the 30th of May in New Zealand. In the PSL last night, Kaiser Chiefs went down 1-0 to Maritzburg United in a league match at the Harigwala Stadium. A single goal from Kumbulani Banda, his first touch of the game, nine minutes from time, handed the Amakosi side their second loss in the APSA Premiership this season. In another encounter, Mamelodi Sundowns have closed the gap to APSA Premiership leaders Kaiser Chiefs to just eight points with a 5-0 win over Pol Polokwane City. A brace from Kama Biliat, as well as goals from Kodbert Malajila, Anthony Lafour, and Rodney Ramagalila took the Brazilians to an emphatic victory against Polokwane City, who now has easily the worst defensive record in the league. In other African football news, RTM Sports can confirm the Ghanaian Football Association has reported some top flight players to law enforcement agencies over allegations that they bet on their own team to lose. The Football Federation President Kwesi Inyata Kayi said the allegations were a very dangerous development in Ghana's football. At a media conference, Inyata Kayi explained why players had been reported but did not name anyone under suspicion. Security agencies have been reportedly notified to do the necessary investigations and then will bring all culprits involved to book. In international football news, the Champions League last night was sizzling hot as Chelsea crashed out of the Champions League on a stormy night at Stamford Bridge as Paris Saint-Germain reached the last eight on away goals after extra time. PSG came from behind twice to take revenge for last season's quarter-final exit at the hands of Chelsea. 
showing great character to play for the last hour of normal time and the added 30 minutes without talisman Slatan Ibrahimovic after he had been sent off for a foul on Oscar. Slatan Ibrahimovic said about the red card, When I got the red card, all the Chelsea players came around. It felt like I had a lot of babies around me. Blues players surrounded Dutch referee following Ibrahimovic's lunging tackle on Brazilian midfielder Oscar. The forward added, I don't know if I have to get angry or start to laugh. For me, when I saw the red card, I was like, the guy doesn't know what he's doing. In an ugly eyesore of a match punctuated by fouls and contentious incidents, Gary Cahill's late goal looked to be sending Chelsea through until their former defender, David Lewis, thumped home a header to send this last 16 tie into extra time. Once more, Chelsea went ahead through Heading Hazard's penalty following Thiago Silva's handball, but PSG's Brazilian defender made amends perfectly with another superb header, six minutes from time, to give coach Laurent Blanc's side the progression they deserved. After the match, coach Mourinho said at a press conference, our performance was not good enough. The opponents were stronger than us. They coped better with the pressure of the game. We tried to win, but the moment they had 10 men, we felt too much under pressure. He added Paris Saint-Germain deserved it when a team can't defend two corners and concede two goals from corners they don't deserve to win, the special one lamented. In the night's other scorching encounter, Thomas Muller, Jerome Boateng and Frank Ribéry scored either side of halftime after a first leg which ended goalless. Muller and Bastuba, Mario Goza and Robert Lewandowski added goals. Bayern Munich equaled their biggest Champions League win as they reached their eighth quarter-final in 11 seasons with a 7-0 win. In cricket news, World Cup 2015, RTM Sports can confirm that Scotland's all-time leading wicket-taker Majid Hack has been sent home from the Cricket World Cup after posting a race-related tweet. After not being selected for his side's 148-run defeat by Sri Lanka in Hobart, he tweeted, Always tougher when you're in the minority. Hashtag colour, hashtag race. The post has since been deleted. In the world of tennis, Heather Watson reached the BMP Barry Bass Open second round at Indian Wells with a nervy win over German Julia Georges. Watson won the first set and served for the match at 5-3 in the second. The 22-year-old Briton failed to take the opportunity and lost five games in a row as her opponent squared the match and broke in the decider. But Watson rallied to level the match and ultimately came through 6-4, 5-7, to book a second round meeting with 29th seed Camilla Giorgi. In more tennis news, our sources understand that Andy Murray plans to work with Jonas Bjorkman in the next month with a view to the former Wimbledon semi-finalist joining his full-time coaching team. The 42-year-old Swede will assist French Fed Cup captain Amélie Moresmo, who works with Murray for 25 weeks in a year. Bjorkman is a former world number four who retired in 2008. And lastly, the latest news on the much-anticipated fight between Manny Pac-Man and Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather says he has never wanted to win a fight more after coming face-to-face -face with Manny Pacquiao at a press conference last night. The pair met in Los Angeles to promote their long-anticipated $300 million mega fight at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas on the 2nd of May. Pacquiao is one of the best fighters of this era, Mayweather said. I'm in the gym right now working, dedicating myself to my sport and pushing myself to the limit 
because I have never wanted to win a fight more in my life. May 2nd, that's when the world stops, Mayweather added. Pacquiao, on the other hand, said, This is what the fans have been waiting for since five years. I came from nothing into something, and I owe everything to the Lord. We all can't wait for this fight. So that's all the sports news I have for you all. Just recapping the top stories tonight. In African football news, Flying Eagles qualify for the Under-20 World Cup. In more African football news, Kaiser Chiefs suffer defeat in the PSL and Sundowns destroy Polokwane. In international football news, 10-man PSG dump Chelsea out of the Champions League and Bayern Munich too hot for Shakhtar Donetsk. In Cricket World Cup news, Scotland send home Majid Haq. In tennis news, Heather Watson beats Julia Georges in Indian Wells. In more tennis news, Andy Murray chooses Jonas Bjorkman to join his coaching team. In boxing news, the world will stop on the 2nd of May, says Floyd Mayweather. And now to your sports guide for today. Now, today you can look forward to the ICC World Cup, South Africa versus United Arab Emirates. You could also look forward to some cycling and also to the Twane Open in golf. And in the African Under-20 Championships, South Africa will be facing Mali and Zambia versus Ghana. And this will be taking place at 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. respectively. Then you can look forward to Europa League action. Wolfsburg of Germany, that is, will be facing Inter Milan of Italy. And Dnepro versus Ajax. Also, Besiktas will be in action. And Everton will be playing Dynamo Kiev. Fiorentina versus Roma and Napoli versus Dynamo Moscow would also be playing in the Europa League tonight. Look out for those matches. And lastly, tennis, ATP 1000, Indian Wells would be at 8 p.m. I'll be back tomorrow reporting on the results of all those mouth-watering fixtures. It is a good night for now from me, Adela Neo Grande. Enjoy the rest of your evening and the rest of your RTM viewing. Let's cross over back to Vicky for now. Thank you very much Adelani for that sports update. Now let's have a look at the weather. Thank you very much for joining us here on RTM News. From me, Vicky Lee White, have a lovely evening and we'll see you again tomorrow.